Right everyone, it is that time again. One of my favourite videos, I know we've only done one in the past, but it is our Premier League predictions for the 2021 to 2022 season. Um, probably a lot of, you know, predictions that me and Ben have put down, you, you're probably just going to have a problem with. So if you do have a problem with it, or, you know, want to discuss it, please... Uh, drop us a comment, just however, me and Ben will get back to you. Also, we are approaching 400 subscribers, you know, I, I, I cannot believe it, so please, subscribe to the channel, get us to 400, we'll probably do some sort of special video, um, like the video, and uh, yeah, let's just get straight into it. Alright, so me and Ben are going to start from who we think is going to get relegated. So I'll go with my three, and Ben will go with his three. So, coming in 20th, I'm gone, I've gone with Watford. Um, or should I say Stake, because that's, uh, that's their new uh, sponsorship. I think it's dreadful on the shirt. I, um, I, I agree with Nathan. I've also gone for Watford in 20th place. Yeah, um, my reason is, I think it's... I know it's only been a season, but there's so much. There's so much in this league. I mean, we're talking the likes of us obviously developing, you know, with all the signings we've got. Chelsea, Man City, uh, Man United. Like, there's t there's just too much competition going in this league, and I don't think Watford are capable anymore. I mean, if you're talking about their best players, obviously I'd, I'd have to go with uh, Foster in goal. Um, and that's it. <laughs> you want to say anything else about that? Yeah, I mean, with Watford, their signings that they made haven't been really interesting. Ashley Fletcher, Danny Rose, Josh King. And who are all that? Apart from that, they've signed a bunch of old players. The manager situation always seems to happen with them, and they will yeah. probably end up changing manager. And it's um, yeah, it's just a team that just I just, I I have no confidence in. Um, and I think everyone would agree with that. So Watford, I think we both got in twentieth place. In nineteenth, I have gone. Or Southampton. Who have you gone for? I've gone with Norwich City. Norwich City. That's very interesting. So I've got them. We'll see. Um, obviously, Southampton for me, they've lost things. Yeah. They're bringing in Adam Armstrong, which is a very good replacement. But the issue is, Obafemi is apparently going to Blackburn Rowe. So that means they now need to buy another striker. Um, and I've. Well, they've still got Che Adams, just remembering about that, actually. Yeah, but. Um, he's not but like he's a star injured. Man. He's injured. Yeah, he's injured. Not a star yeah. man. Um, but then you've also got to consider who's James or Prowse staying. If he isn't, very screwed. Yeah. I just think, considering last season, without Ings, they don't really score goals. They just look shambles. And I think, yeah, if they saw Wall Prowse, I think they're in a lot of trouble anyway. And I think, I just, so, I just yeah. think this is. That's 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 like the real deal breaker. Say if Wall Prowse goes, I think it is definitely relegation <coughs> if he doesn't yeah. stay. Yeah. Where they all went last season. <laughs> yeah, but I think this is the their time to go down. So for me, 19th in Southampton. Um, obviously, I put Norwich City. Yes, they have had quite a good transfer window in my opinion for Norwich City. Anyway, uh, obviously with our help, 35 million for Buendia. Uh gaining the likes of Billy Gilmore from Chelsea. I know he's around what 18, 19, but he's still quite a good player. Yeah, on loan as well. Uh, Milit Rashika. Just wanted to say one thing on Milit Rashika. Uh, the other season, we wanted him, but he had a little comment saying he didn't want to go to a relegation fighting team. His team got relegated, and now he's going to Norwich City. So, amazing business right but Yeah, there. but they didn't have to. He wanted to join us here. We, we had hardly any of the signings that he had. Just, I, don't, I don't understand. I just don't understand. But yeah, I've gone with Norwich City because it's the same with Watford. It's just a complete different league. There's so much competition in this one. Everyone's wanting something. <laughs> And um, I think we're gonna the, the league's gonna overwhelm them. In 18th place, then I got a bit stuck on this one because I think there's three candidates I could have made. For, well, actually four. Yeah. Um, I'll tell you my candidates. I could have went with Wolves. I could have went with Newcastle. I could have went with Brighton. I could have went with Burnley. Um, I think it's very it's very hard to choose between them. Um, but in my 18th place, I've gone for Burnley. Who have you gone for? I've gone for Crystal Palace. Crystal Palace? Everyone. Nobody seems to rate Crystal Palace apart from me. You'll see where. Right. You'll see. Yeah, I know, but the sign. Oh, we'll get to it anyway. Um, Burnley. No Burnley. real. Burnley. <laughs> Burnley. Oh, <wow. laughs> no, no, no major signings. I know they brought in Wayne Hennessy. 
Yeah. But it's a team that they haven't really brought in anybody. Um, it'll be interesting to see if Dwight McNeil stays. Probably will. It's, 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 it's just not an inspiring team. I think there's a lot of better quality considering in our promoted teams apart from Watford. I think... I, I, I think this is finally the time to go down for them. Um, yeah, I feel they've overstayed their welcome there. But I do feel like Sean Dyche will probably come out better than this at a better job somewhere else. So in my team, I've got Burnley. Yeah, I just want to speak about that. Um, I'm one of the people who say if Sean Dyche is still at Burnley, he's going to keep him up if it is 17th. Um, it's amazing how, what he's doing at Burnley. I mean, it's about the players, obviously. There's, there's not much going on there. I mean, you can describe some of the players being as okay, like Chris Wood, uh, Dwight McNeil, obviously Pope in goal. But other than that, it's just... It's quite... A, it's Yeah, I think they have overstayed a welcome. I would, I'm not saying I want to go down, but I think they should go down and just, you know... Rebuild. Rebuild. Because it, 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 they need rebuilding. Obviously, they need some money as well. I know their owners, their new ones, have some money. But are they willing to spend it? I'm not too sure. Yeah. So you've got Crystal Palace in 18th. I've got Burnley in 18th. Those are our three relegation spots. Right. 17th place. I've gone with Brentford. Um, I think there's going to be a massive relegation scrap between them and Crystal Palace. Uh, I think they're going to have a real bad start to the season but at the end of the season they're going to start picking up points awesome, yeah but you know i think they've had they could be because awesome. i people seem to like i know it's pre-season but they've had quite a good pre-season i think they would it was a 2-2 against man united yeah um i know they play some of us it's just escaped my memory but still I, I do believe they have that sort of squad to stay up uh their uh kit on the other hand I don't really rate it that much. I mean, I think it's better than Watford's, but yeah. Who have you gone for 17th? Uh, in 17th, I've then gone for Brighton. I think there's a real good case them to go down as well. Um, I think other two, I think Brighton would probably be more likely to go down. Um, lack of quality signing completely. Isn't that a, ba a backup goalie, some striker. Dude. I haven't gone. I know the link with this... The league are player in midfield, but even there, that's not really going to solve their problems. Obviously, they've just sold Ben White, 50, um, million. 50 million. So it's, re it's a really good amount of money there to get back. The issue is, are they going to spend in the right places? No. I just don't feel excited whenever I see Brighton. I think the football is quite poor. I think it's a team that is really championship standard now. Um, and I think they're a team that's overstayed their welcome. So in 17th, I've got Brighton. I could definitely agree with that. So going on to 16th, I've gone Newcastle. Where do we even start with Newcastle? I just wanted to say, it's just utter shit what's going on there. I know, um, you know, there's been a, a few talks of buying Joe Willock from Arsenal for around 25 million. I'm not too sure if they've agreed to buy or whatever. Well, they've said they said they agreed to buy that, but the issue with that is... Have they got the money? Or they have got the money. Well, they clearly have because they're going to buy them. But the issue is that being their top target out of a completely a thin Newcastle team with a manager that's signed a three-year extension somehow. Really? Uh, I knew yeah, well, he's apparently going to sign an extension. Um, he has a thing. It's Newcastle. There is absolute... There's no signings apart from on Willock. Bruce is staying. The football's poor. But you've got... But, the issue with Newcastle is they always seem to skank it out. There was always <laughs> some way that they do it. Last season, they went on that really good run at the end, getting those wins kanks to the likes of Willock. Yeah. But if you keep Callum Wilson and, say, Max Manfit, get them scoring goals, um, I think Newcastle will be fine. And I think it shows in my predictions. But I think that's also a team I would have had going down. Um, in my 16th place, I've gone with Norwich City. I think I would have put them down if it wasn't for the signing of Josh Sar Sargent from Word of Bremen. Because I think that's an exceptional signing. Um, Gilmore alone, as you said, Rashika. It's going to be their new Premier League season again. I've got a bit more confidence behind them. They've done it right this time and actually brought in a lot more players. Although they've lost Buendia, Cantwell could potentially be on the way out. Um, but I think, if anything, I could see Norwich doing a little bit much better this season. I think 16th is probably a reasonable place for them. Um, so yeah, 16th, I've got Norwich City. 15th place then, I have gone for Burnley. And I the reason I've gone there is just like, sort of from the 14th to 17th place, you could probably put anyone. 
of the likes of Newcastle, Brentford, Burnley, Southampton, Brighton, Crystal Palace, Norwich, and even Watford. Um, the only reason I'll put them there is just I think Sean Dyche is a great manager at a club really below his standards. I think he could you know push for a club um, possibly in the top ten regular. But yeah, other than that, it's just, I'll just, that's just, there's no other reason why I put them there. Um, in 15th, I have gone with newly promoted Brentford. I think they're going to do the best out of all the Premier League teams. I know this is the first ever Premier League season, um, but I think up. going to want to stay. But I think the pure excitement of being in the league and seeing them for the first time, I think that's going to play in well. Obviously, signing a chair, the centre half and on Yenka in midfield. Um, they still got Ivan Tony and Buemo. Um, you know. The likes of Jensen, Canos, Rico Henry as well, yeah. who I thought we would have signed. Um, Raya in goal. I think there's a really good team there. Obviously, Brentford. The problem with this one is Brent Premier League is a t is a league where you need to spend money, as we've shown this season from Manchester City and Chelsea and Man United. But you know, obviously, Brentford are the masters of the money ball. Um, but you've got to wonder, maybe they might have to break the formula if they want to stay up and actually secure the club on that part rather than the financial side. Um, but the football's exciting. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a bold prediction. I think there will be Brentford, oh, not Brentford, there will be Arsenal on this Friday. Um, I think they're going to pull out one of those big wins from somewhere. Um, and ultimately, I think they're going to be fine. Some 15th, I've got Brentford. Score prediction though? 2 1. Loving it. But yeah, I just wanted to say as well, Brentford is a, is one of the games that I, I do I'm genuinely really, want to really, go for. I'm just really excited for Brentford in general. But yeah, I, think, I think that game's a great game to open the Premier League with Arsenal versus um, Brentford. Obviously, Arsenal in a bit of a disarray. Brentford, yeah. new and exciting. I think, for me, that's two London teams that I'd really like to see come together. And we'll see. Yeah, that will make a great video. So if we do actually go to that game. So in 14th place, I've gone for Southampton, and this is purely if Warprowse, yeah, it, only if Warprowse stays. Um, I still have hope he comes to Villa, um, and I just wanted to make this statement here: if South, Southampton sell Warprowse to Aston Villa, uh, he will be a key player in the World Cup for England. I think it, you know set pieces. Obviously, we brought in. Um, a set piece specialist for for guy's name you probably know it. I don't know. Um, I call him Beyonce. Yeah, he looks like Beyonce. But <laughs> I think Warprowse coming to Villa, we could definitely help him out with all them. And I think he would be one of them really underrated players in the Premier League. And uh, you know, it's just a really exciting player. I just absolutely love him at Villa. But if he does stay at Southampton, uh, I could see him staying in 14th place, but still having that sort of relegation fighting uh, into the season. What about you? A 14th, I've got Newcastle. It's similar to what I've already said, really. Um, the only the only thing I'm going with, apart from Willock, but I don't really think it's going to massively change them. It's a team that skanks it out. They always do it. Yeah. Um, and I think I think Sibra should be sacked. I think all Newcastle fans can agree, regardless of where they finish, I think he should go. <laughs> so that, that's my issue with Newcastle. There's nothing about They should be down, but they're just going to skank it out. Joe, they remind me of Birmingham City. You mean Birmingham City? We're fucking connected up going down these. I just can't. Yeah, but that's literally that's the joke. It's like they're going to skank out. So in 14, new cow. So in 13, flights, I've gone for Leeds United. I really? think, yeah, and I think they're going to. Uh, Nine plus season. I know, but I think you know. Marcelo Bielsa, he's an amazing manager, of course, but I, I think this season they're just going to be comfortable in that place. Uh, no relegation fighting, but I think they'll just, you know, I don't think they'll get close to Europe or anything. As much as they probably could go for it, I just I think they're going to have that calm season. Um, and yeah, they're just going to be completely fine. In my 13th place, then, I've got... I, should, I shouldn't say my second team, because if anything, it should be Warsaw. But second team, big up Jack if you know. Um, Wolverhampton Wanderers. Oh, it's it's it's. I think it's sad with Wolves. Obviously they've lost Nuno. Um, Bruno Lange has come in. Um, a lot of the players. It's oh, it's a massive mess. I know Jimenez is coming back, but you got to think he's not going to hit the ground running. It might be a bit 
timid considering the injury he had. He won't really want to sustain that. But I think if he gets going again, that could change the whole season because he might have to end up playing Fabio Silva up front, which is a travesty. Um, obviously, Patricio going out. They're ringing Jose Sar in goal. Nune, Neves could be on his way out. It's looking incredibly, incredibly bleak there. And I just don't think the manager's really going to succeed much. I think it's going to be a massive failure. And I think if this season doesn't go any better than my prediction, I think in the next two or three years, we can see him going back down. Um, but I really hope they don't because I think it's a team that got Europa League football in their first season. Could have actually gone on to win Europe. Um, but yeah, in 13th, I've got Wolverhampton Wanderers. Hope they go down. All right, 12th place, I've gone for Brighton. And I think I think they're just going to have a better season. I mean... There's nothing in Brighton. I know. There's no one up. I know, but I think, in, you know, weeks come, obviously, before the transfer window ends, they will be bringing some sort of big signing in. You know, you just got 50 mil for Ben White. I mean, that's just amazing in itself. But I think they will put that money towards someone good. Uh, who they're getting, I'm not too sure. But I don't think... You can stay with the likes of Mo Mope. Mope. Not too sure how to say his name, but I don't think, you know, he's the right man going forward. Obviously on the bench he's alright, but they just need they just need a better player than him. But I do believe Brighton will have a better season. I mean they had an alright season last season, but obviously uh they ended what, fifteenth, sixteenth, but yeah, it, it never really changes. But I think this season they'll have a, a just a, a decent season. What about you? I think this is probably the boldest prediction I've made apart from Southampton. In 12th, I'm going for Crystal Palace. Now, I know I know there's a lot of factors with Palace here. Um, first of all, keeping Zaha and Eze. Great, great moves there. Obviously, going to show up that midfield and attack. Um, I, think the si I think the signings where you don't get a lot of credit. Jo Joachim Anderson from Lyon played for last season. I thought someone we should have been signing. Um, but a really great move there to show up the defence. Alongside that, don't know how to pronounce his name properly, but Guay from Chelsea played at Swansea. He was also really good in the Championship. Um, Michael Elise from Reading, who we were linked with, really good. Somebody that's probably not going to make an impact straight away. Um, but he looks good. Conor Gallagher, I know somebody that's not probably massively exciting, but it's still a very good player for Crystal Palace. I would argue they still need a better striker than Benteke or... Um, are you? I know you could say about Schwai, but the issue with about Schwai is he didn't really deliver the last time he was there. And then obviously Patrick Vieira's first season in English football as the manager of a really tough team. Um, but I think the team that's really going to surprise everybody. I think the core stays the same. Defensively, it's massively improved. Um, I think they are a team that's going to surprise everybody. So in 12th, I've got the Palace. So in 11th place, and I have really good reasoning for this, I've gone West Ham. And my reason is, when a team gets into Europe, and in West Ham's case, it seems like the their board didn't really want to get into it. You know what I mean? I wouldn't say they didn't want to get. I think they never expected it to happen. Um, but well, yeah, I'll let you go on because I'll just say West Ham for my predictions quite close. Yeah, um, I think they're gonna. Obviously, eleven place is not bad. But I think they're gonna have obviously a bit of a downfall in the in the league, because um, obviously in the Europa League you gotta be travelling everywhere. You know the players gonna be real tired, so you know there might be some cases in playing like the youth players or something. Um, but yeah, just, you know it's not it's not a major it's not a major fall for West Sam. I mean you're in the Europa League, um, you're still in the Premier League, but I, I don't think they're gonna have such a good season this season. But what about you? Um, in my 11th place, then, I've gone for Everton. Obviously, losing um, Colum Angelotti to Real Madrid is a bit rubbish. Um, Benitez in his managers are really good appointments. I know he didn't get on well because of obviously the Liverpool links. Um, Damari Gray, Asmi Begovic and Andy Townsend being brought in. No, apart, apart from Damari Gray, who's looked really well in pre-season, not really massive signing as they need. I would argue they need a better centre-half. And someone in that number 10 role, considering Tigerton's, let's just say, likes playing with 10 roles. Um, oh. But I just don't see it with Everton. I think it's going to be one of those transitional periods. Had they kept Angelotti, they could have made that push for the Conference League. But yeah, Everton, mid table, 11th. 
10th place. And I really don't like saying this, but uh, it was out of these and like Tottenham. But I've gone with Wolves. Um, I don't. I think it really plays a part of Jimenez, Jimenez, however you pronounce his name. Uh, obviously, he's just coming back from a real bad injury. And I, I do believe, like, somewhere from probably like halfway through the season, he will pick up that form. Um, obviously, Fabio Silva's up front for now, but obviously he's, what, 18, 19, so he's not, like, fully proven yet. But, um, yeah, I think they're going to have a better season than they have. Uh, last season, they had a few disappointments. Um, you know, can even beat us, but obviously we had a, a really good season. Uh, we picked four points against them, and they only got one against us. But, um, yeah, I've gone 10th for them, and... Uh, yeah, I think that new manager sources, you know, he, they, he just suits them. What about you? In 10th, I've gone West Ham. Um, I completely agree with you in the sense that I think Europa is going to massively harm him. The signings they haven't made isn't really spectacular. I know Ariola's come in in goal, which is a really great signing there, although it's on loan. Um, I know they're still linked with um, a midfielder and a centre half. They really need an out and out striker because you can't play Antonio there because he's going to get injured. Um, yeah, I don't think they'll do massively well in European competition. And I think mid-table is really weird. They're just going to stay out. So 10th place for me. Right, ninth place. And I have gone with Tottenham Hotspur. I think this is... I just think they're going to have quite a short season, to be honest. I mean, yeah, you got in Nuno, who's an alright manager. We're still not too sure what actually happened there. Uh, at Wolves, whether it was a dis disagreement with the owners, yeah. But um, yeah, I think it's gonna take a season or so to really get involved, like obviously getting to know the players and all that. Um, and it obviously it plays a part if Hurricane stays with or not. I'm not, I'm still not too sure. I don't think anyone's really sure. Um, but there's other players, obviously, like Human Son, um, and you know players like that. But I think they're gonna have a real Shy season. What about you? I have gone the red side of London with the big arse. No. Um, it's hard with Arsenal. Eighth twice under Mikel Arteta. Really good argument that he shouldn't be in the job right now because he only bowled the European uh, Europa League semi final. Um, however, signings show a lot more ambition. Ben White, Tavares cover at left back, Lukonga. Looks really good. The triumph for James Madison, possibly a while. Um, they're still going to need a lot more signings. No European football for them, so they don't have to worry about that. Which probably means they'll end up winning the FA Cup again somehow. They're, just, they're so rubbish, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Um, yeah, as I said, I think they'll probably lose that game on Friday against Brentford. And it, re it this is the one that has really mind-boggled me. Because I think if they pull it out of the bag with the signings... They stop playing like idiots. I think they can be top six. It, it, it's just a simple case of they just got to put it out of the bag for me. But I'm going to stay with nine because they are absolutely garbage. Right, so in eighth place, I've gone for Everton. I think they ended eighth place last season. I'm not too sure. I think, they, yeah, I think they were rendered around there. Something like top that. 10, definitely. I think, yeah, uh, talking about Rafa Benitez, really good manager. Obviously, he has played or been the manager at Liverpool. So... Bit of controversy there, but I do believe out of all the managers you could have gone for, he was probably the right one. Um, I do really like him. Obviously, we all know him from Newcastle promoting them, um, and I, he just suits them to be honest. Obviously, I don't know what's going on at Everton with uh, Sigelson, but uh, nonce. But yeah, what, what are you gonna say? I was to play around. Um, I've actually changed this one um, just because I'm gonna be. A little bit more over positive, but I, we'll go on to that when we get to the next one. In eighth, I have gone Leeds United. Um, I don't agree with you in the sense that they're gonna have a bad season because they didn't really they had ninth first year in the Prem. Um, did really well, kept the Elsa obviously. Uh, they've signed Furpo and Jack Harrison on a permanent, so now they've got the new left back in. Um, Jack Harrison again, still being with the team for another good few years now. Um, it's a Leeds team that I think. Hasn't got the squad enough ready to push on for Europe. It also isn't a team that I don't feel is going to be pushing down below 10th place because of the manager. 
I think this year will probably be like a Carabao Cup run, FA Cup run maybe, something like that. Um, but yeah, Leeds play really good football. They're going to be a hard team to beat. Um, and yeah, I've got them in eighth place. Right, seventh place. And I think I've seen quite a few Villa fans say this, but obviously I've gone with Aston Villa. I've also gone with, this is the one that I was with. I, I admitted that I'd put them eighth. I think realistically we're going to finish top 10. Um, but yeah, Aston Villa, seventh. We've talked about this. Considering this sort of be apparently talk about. Um, a lot of factors here. A lot of factors. First of all, Greece sold for 100 million to Manchester City. Big airwaves. Obviously, that's going to affect how we play as a team. Obviously, not having that hold up player in there. Um, however, they said they haven't spent the 100 million yet. I beg to differ considering the signings. Danny Ings is our another striker, which means we are apparently going to be playing two up front. Leon Bailey, incredibly talented Jamaican winger. Emi Buendia, 35 to 40 million from Norwich in the number 10 role. Or out wide on the right. Ashley Youngers, left back and centre off cover, or even left mid. Um, and Alex Twanzebe from Manchester United. Um, it's a real roll of the dice with Villa. I think I'm I'm confident top ten this year. Yeah. I think the players are there. It's going to take that adjustment period for some of them. Obviously, no Grealish, but I do believe this is a very big push for Europe. I know I've seen some people saying that um, finishing ten for whatever wouldn't really be massively exciting i would beg to differ because i think then that establishes i'd still be happy with 10th i'd yeah. obviously like 7th or 8th considering i think we have the squad there for it now um it's a roll of the dice i think they need a good start we've got a really good great set of games apart from chelsea 12 points there we just managed to keep a bit of consistency of the season play it keep the likes of Ings, Wendy, and also Bailey, really hoping it's going to come to light. I think Villa can push on for that seventh place. What have you got to say? There's a lot you can say, right, because obviously we are Villa fans, but I do believe we will get in to the conference. Obviously, if you win that, you get to Europa League. Um, you know, as a Villa fan, we all know we do things the hard way, but we still get it done. Uh, you know, obviously last the, the other season, staying up uh, 17th, but we're definitely in that mix right now where we are looking for to get wins against Everton, Tottenham, Arsenal, Wolves, um, Leicester. You know, we are in that mix right now. And it's just nice to see, uh, obviously, non-Villa fans saying that we're going to be in that top 10 spaces. I've seen some non-Villa fans even say we're going to push for top four. Just imagine that, Aston Villa to push him for top four. That would just be an amazing season. But it's just as you said, we've got a good run of games coming up. Um... You know, it's around 12 points, but I do believe we can be competing with Chelsea. Uh, it's just it's just really nice that... I know I know, I know. we beat Chelsea last season, but that was a game that... I was, he, made, well, he, to, he did mean something for Chelsea because he ended up getting them yeah. in the Champions League. But really, you know what I mean? You've got to think, they've got Lukaku, Lukaku, sorry. Uh, they're bringing in potentially Kunde. Some even more potential signings coming in. It's a very hard team to beat, just won Champions League. Um... But then again, we start with Watford, Newcastle, Brentford, them, and then Everton. 12 points there, maybe 13. Um, but yeah, it, it, it does. I think it's just a complete roll of the dice. Yeah, because I just talking about that Chelsea game, it did mean something to start off with, I'd say. Because I, you know, if I, if I think it was if Leicester beat Tottenham, they would have really been the shit. Um, but yeah, we got out with that win. Amazing into the season, considering the circumstances. But yeah, Aston Villa, it's, it's definitely like, I I'll definitely agree. We could definitely get to, uh, go for top 10. But I think I think we're just going to really do something this season. Like, you know what I mean? We're, we're definitely just going to go for it. I think, you know, clubs are definitely going to fear us. Uh, and it's just nice. We're getting that respect. And it's just, the thing is, it's so nice that we can be thinking and other uh you know, supporters of other clubs in the league are still saying that we we're talking about like top ten without our number number ten Jack Grealish. It's just really nice to see that you, you can lose a player of his caliber and still be thinking about that. So yeah, we've gone seventh Aston Villa. Top six now. The push for Europa League and Champions League in sixth place. I have gone with Spurs. I've gone with Arsenal. 
And I just wanted to say quickly, I do believe we're going to have that problem where uh, like the last two or three games are going to be determined whether it's us or Arsenal in sixth place. Okay, very interesting there. Yeah. Um, I've gone with Spurs simply because of the calibre of the team they have. I think mean, this one also relies on if Kane stays. Um, but then again, if Martinez was to come in for that player, I think then it really wouldn't change much. Obviously, Nuno's first season in charge with Spurs. Good manager. Very interested to see what he's going to be going with. Obviously, signing Romero at centre-half, even though they've sold um, Vertonghen and Alderweire out. So it'll be interesting to see what they're going to go with there. Um, Pierluigi Golini in goal on loan. Uh, much sharpened up since when we had him back in 2016. Brian Gillian for Lamella. I think that's a really good choice there. It's still a very good team. Keep Kane. Kane and Son partnership is going to light up the lead. And Dombele is really coming into form now. Um, and I think they're going to reap the rewards and finally see a bit of a gradual uh, process for the tops. But it all depends on Kane. So I'm going to say I've got Spurs. Fifth place might be a bit controversial. Do you not want to talk about Arsenal? Oh yeah, Arsenal. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> Arsenal. Yeah. So as I've already said, I think we will be like in that mix. Like it's what it's uh, the points are going to be really similar. Obviously, it will be determined the last few games who's actually in that top six place. I think we would just about miss out. But I think as a Villa fan, any Villa fan would be completely fine with it. Uh, getting into Europa League would be amazing. But to be in the conference, you are in some sort of um, you know, European League, and it's it's a massive step because I, you know, finishing seventh for us, you're still gradually going up, and it's it's nice to see. But yeah, Arsenal are just about going to get it. Um, you know, obviously they've missed out on some key players like Buendia, but uh, they are looking at some key players like Madison. Uh, whether they're going to spell, I think, seventy mil for him, not too sure. It's going to determine a lot. I still can't believe they actually put 50 mil on the table for Ben White, but hopefully that somehow turns out good for him. But uh, yeah, I put Arsenal in sixth. So for fifth, very controversial, but I do believe this is going to happen. I've gone Liverpool. Oh, he's gone Liverpool. So controversial that I've also gone Liverpool oy, as well. <laughs> um, I, th I think we're going to be on the same points here. Only signing Kanato. Um, which is a good signing from RB Leipzig, but he, he, he needs a whole lot more. Firmino, rubbish. Yeah, he's not, not a not a striker. And then you got Origi. I think Harvey Elliott and Curtis Jones are going to play a bigger part. I know Gomez and Van Dijk are back, but obviously they've just lost Robertson. Yeah. Um, so they're now going to have to play to Simkas, and that's their only left back. It only takes one injury against one of them for that to crumble again. Obviously, they're not going to play the whole season because they, they just won't happen because the time they've both been out. Um, it, it, it's a team that needs a lot more. They had a quite a poor season, even though finishing third. And I think, if you remember my predictions, I said last year it would start to be the downfall of Liverpool. I was right that season. I think I'm right, we're both right this season. Yeah. But anything else you want to add? It's just... Uh... Yeah, it's just the lack of signs, obviously. I think Klopp's still an amazing manager. Um, and I think, you know, obviously that a final 7-2 last season definitely just made that downfall start. I mean, we went against Van Dijk that night. We still beat him 7-2. Got injured against Everton. Then it really went down for him. But yeah, fifth place for him. I think that's that's quite... That's, if you ask me, that's been nice to him, in a way. But yeah, fourth place... And I've gone with Leicester City. I agree. This is finally Leicester's time. It's your time. Uh, I just wanted to thank uh, Ian Atcher for scoring that penalty against Man City. Because, uh, you know, you can spend 100 million on Jack Grealish and still lose to Man uh, Leicester City in uh, the Community Shield. But um, I think it's your time, to be honest. I mean, I know we're sort of, you know, shouldn't like each other. But still, we want you to be in that place. I think it's definitely time for you. Brendan Rodgers, amazing manager. Um, just thinking back, we should have... I think we were looking at Ian Atcher for like 12 million. I wonder how much he's worth right now. He's got to be... 24. I can't imagine he's worth a lot. Um, just had an amazing season. Though. But yeah, Leicester, I agree. I think it's finally their time. Um, you could make the case for will it affect him if Madison goes. I don't think so just because he didn't really play a lot of games considering his injury last season. Um, but obviously signing Dakar 
who's now probably looking like him and Ian Achena going ahead in the striker position with Vardy. Yeah. They start to look down. Obviously, Sumer in midfield to really shore it up there, potentially a replacement for Madison. Um, I think Tielemann's going to play a massive role this season. I know, obviously, they signed the likes of the FA Cup um, and winning the Community Shield. Doing really well there. I think they're going to get that CL push. And I think this is finally their time. So we both agree in fourth place is Leicester City. In third place then, I think we also both agree on this one then, is Manchester United. Um, You know, obviously they made a really good sign. It's agreement. In, uh, uh, what's his name? Sancho. Sorry, yeah, very good agree. Very good signing there. Varane as well. I know a lot of people don't want to rate Varane, but he's a world-class centre-half. What they need considering it's now going to be Maguire and Lindelof, uh, not Lindelof, sorry. Lindelof, Lindelof sucks. Um, Maguire and Varane. Also now Sancho, that front three of probably Martial. Or even, I probably could potentially be Cavani. Cavani, Rashford and Sancho. Very bloody scary there. They've still got Fernandez. Pogba's probably going to end up staying. Yeah. The question is, will he be able to be turning it on? Um, I know they had a really good season last year, finishing second. Um, I think they're going to fall one short because of the two teams in front of them. Um, but yeah, Manchester United for me in third. Yeah, um, I was going to say, I think Pogba is probably their best player right now. I would argue Fernandez. But... Fernandez, but you know, we all know how uh, much of a cheap, cheap scumbag he is. <laughs> um, but I don't really want to talk about him too much. But I think they're, you know, some exceptional players there. I mean, Maguire, amazing the Euros. Um, you know, Cavani, just to think a few years ago, we should have signed him. I don't know if you knew that, but... No, I didn't know. I did know that in 2015, though, to be fair. So, he would have been crap anyway. Um, so, you're sort of getting into form now. Well, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I'll get into form when he's older. But, yeah, Manchester United in third place for both of us. Now. The controversy begins the controversial pickings we've got second and first place there's two more teams left I just from looking at the notes I don't think we agree on this one um, so I will let you go first then and say why you think your team is going to be second Man City are going to be second and I am going to say it because I think I think last season they were okay I mean I remember they were pretty much 15th for the first four or five games, I believe. Uh, with Man United, it's not really shit. I mean, for Man City to be like that, to start off a season, you know, it's really crap, and but still win the league. Uh, obviously, that only came down to Liverpool having a crap season as well. But I think they're going to have a good season this season. I think they'll have around 94 points. I think they'll have around 94 points. Um, buying Grealish... I still don't understand why you need Grealish more than Harry Kane, to be honest. But he's gone now, and uh, we don't really give a shit. I mean, I've got over it. But, yeah, I've got Man City as second. Before you go on to the first place, then, because obviously we're going different then. I've gone with Chelsea, then, in second place. Um, I know Chelsea are very high favourites to win the league behind Manchester City this year. Um, and I agree with that in the sense of it's big money to throw at Lukaku, 100 yeah. million. 115, isn't it? 150, somewhere around there. I think that's very big money to throw at him. But, wait, well, it's not in my hand the age. It's the fact of the Manchester United career that he had where he completely just failed in the end. But absolutely smashing it. Or smashed it at Inter Milan. Obviously coming over to Chelsea for his second run with the club. Champions League winners, Premier League potential, two are really difficult to beat. Um, we did. Well, yeah, we did. We four points for <laughs> But obviously, bringing in Kunde potentially as well. Potentially a few more signings even to be registered with Chelsea. I think I think the way they play um, and defensively, how strong they are, I think that's what's going to make them better than Manchester City. But I just think overall, as a team... Um, I just don't see Chelsea going the full mile and managing to overcome Manchester City. Um, and then with that in mind, then, in first place, I've obviously got Manchester City. That means you've got Chelsea. Yeah, I just want to say quickly, I 
their manager, Tuchel, is amazing. I know we took four points from last season. They scored two goals, but we, we got the win. And uh, Drew at their place. Um, I just really like him. And I think the signings they have, um, obviously with Lukaku, even though he's, he's old, he's still getting a lot of goals and he should be in the Chelsea team. Uh, obviously starting. And there's just there's a lot of competition in that team. Um, I like their goalkeeper, Mende. I think he's first choice right now. Um, and yeah, there's just a really, really hard team to beat. And it looks like Timo Werner isn't going to get too much game time either. He should. I Because I said this last season. I agree with what a lot of people said. I, don't, I know. I understand it was a very bad year for him. You've got to say it's his first season yeah. in the Prem. He's playing with RB Likes against some really crap teams. Um, I agree this season. I think it's got to change. Um, I know, I think Kai Havertz also deserves to have oh, yeah. a lot more focus on him. Obviously, scoring the oh, win in the seal, but also the money he's paid for him, he needs to come out. Um, yeah, I agree. I think Lukaku is a strong signing. you just got to wonder, is it going to work in the end? Um, for Manchester City, for me, obviously, Greece for 100 million. I agree with you. I think Kane should have been the bigger priority. And we don't know, it still could happen. I mean, the signs are more so point towards it going to happen than it not. But Grealish for 100 million, is he really going to improve the team? Probably not. I don't really... Get used to the bench, son. <laughs> I don't really see where much improvement's going to come from City. I think he definitely needs to be a striker, so I mean, the only one is Gabriel Jesus now. Um... But, you know, as a team, it's still very strong. I think they've got the best centre-back pairing in John Stones and Ruben Diaz. Very strong there. The best goalie in the league, Edison. Um, purely on clean sheets. Martinez. Yeah, I know everyone says Martinez, but no. Um, obviously, as I said, Kane potentially coming in. Messi's obviously gone to PSG now. Yeah. Um, but they still could be potentially bringing in some big signings. I just think Man City is just going to be incredibly difficult to beat. I would argue I don't... I would argue Man City would be fine to finish second if they win the Champions League. I think, simply put, he needs to be Champions League or Pep should be fired after this season. Yeah, uh, something I missed out, sorry, about Villa. I think we will have a good cup run. Uh, what cup? I think FA Cup this season. No, the last two seasons, we've we've been out of the FA Cup first game, I think. I think the first up when we got promoted was Fulham, losing to him at 2-1 at home. And then obviously the next one was Stoke City losing 1-0. But I think Villa will have a good run. I agree with you. Pep, I mean, you know, you can say all you want about Villa. Like, you know, Jack Rear should be at Man City more. But still, we did win the Champions League. Man City have never. But, um, yeah, I think that if if they've got Grealish now, you should really be winning it. I'm sorry, but you should. But I've gone with Chelsea to win the league. And I think they've... I think they've because I've already said uh, Man City are going to have around 94 points this season. Uh, I think Chelsea will probably do the double on, on them again. And they will just about get 100 points. And, uh, you know, I, I think Thomas Tuchel is, is just a really good manager. But uh, anything you want to say to end the video off? Yeah, obviously there are a lot of interesting picks. It's going to be an interesting season. Obviously, tell us in the comments down below what you believe is going to be your... Um, relegated teams, winning teams, where Villa's going to come, or just bold predictions overall. Just tell us what you think. Um, I think we really potentially a really exciting season. Yeah. Half from Watford <laughs> in Southampton. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot to look forward to. I think obviously for me and you, it's obviously just watching the video and just seeing what's going to be happening there. But let us know in the comments down below what you think. Tell us on our social pages on Twitter and Instagram. You can check out us there. But without further ado, I've been knifing. He's been knifing. Been knifing, yeah. I've been banging. Up the villa. With the Friday villa. We'll see you later, boys.